as Andrew said, I'm going to preach to you about fasting today. Everybody's favorite thing to do, amen. <laughs> amen. And who believes that in 2020, God has got increase for you? Yeah. I know. Yeah, a couple of people. Yeah. Good. Who believes there's victory for you this year? Amen. Yeah. Breakthrough and blessing. Yeah. Amen. That's good because you're going to want to fast this month. Yeah. There are incredible benefits to fasting. It activates the power of God in our lives. It creates greater intimacy. It activates the gifts and leads us to a greater level of living in blessing and abundance. Right. Scripture is full of men and women, mighty men and women of God who fasted. And they didn't do it just so they could get a, a good summer body, although that is, that is a benefit. They did it because they wanted to activate God's power in their life and live from a position of victory right. and authority. Yeah. And I know, that, I know that fasting can seem like an like a unappealing or, or a daunting thing to do. I remember the first time I fasted, it was tough. I spent the morning thinking about food. But after a while, you, you, start, to, you start to focus on God and you get the benefits in your life. So I encourage you to fast. If you've never fasted, as Andrew said, I encourage you to press in and give it a go and focus on God because he's going to accelerate you and increase you in this month. Amen? And just I wanted to clarify, you don't have to fast 40 days and 40 nights or 20 days. I I used to read the Bible before I'd ever fasted and I'd look at Elijah and Moses and Jesus, the three that fasted for 40 days, and I'd go, oh, no way. I'd close the Bible go to the pantry, grab the corn chips. (laughs) It can seem unattainable, but no, there are ways to make it manageable and easy. It's not that hard. It can be challenging at first, but when you push through, you will activate the benefits and you will never be the same again. Amen? Amen? So we're going to go. Have you got that scripture, Daniel chapter 1? If you have any snacks on you, you better eat them now. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to unpack some benefits to fasting, so be expectant today. Benefit number one is this. Fasting enforces God's authority. Fasting enforces God's authority. Let's read this scripture. We're starting at verse 6. The king appointed for them a daily ration from the king's choice food and from the wine which he drank, and appointed that they should be educated three years, at the end of which they were to enter the king's personal service. But Daniel made up his mind that he would not defile himself with the king's choice food or with the wine which he drank. And so he sought permission from the commander of the officials that he might not defile himself. This is obviously the story of Daniel and the three other young men of Israel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And in this scripture, they've been taken into the service of King Nebuchadnezzar. He has raided Jerusalem. He's taken God's people captive in a Babylon. And he's put these four men into his service. And he assigns them food from his table. That's grain, meat, and wine. But verse 7 says that Daniel refused to eat the food from the king's table. And he does this not because he wants to be a vegan, but because he wants to live out of God's authority in his life. Nebuchadnezzar is a servant of the enemy And whoever ate from his table had to show loyalty to him, had to come under his authority. And the four young men, they want to enforce God's authority in their life and live out of a position of victory. This is one of the reasons why we fast, because it is the act of enforcing God's authority in your life. It will cause you to walk in a place of authority over whatever seeks to oppose or derail you. The four boys, they... They decide not to fast. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry. They decide to fast and not eat food because they want to have control over their mouth. What goes into their mouth and then what comes out. That this is why we fast food because it's to do with our mouths. Our mouths are very important in our lives as believers. So, and we can fast other things. We can, you know, unplug from the internet for a week, go without Facebook not watch TV, and you, you'll have some benefits from that, but it doesn't have the same spiritual benefit yeah. as not eating food. Biblical fasting is to do with food because it's to do with our mouths, and our mouths govern the level of authority that we live in. So we fast to gain control over what comes in and what comes out. Proverbs 18 says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. 
your mouth is very important. Are you operating in your authority this year? And throughout Scripture, food has played an interesting role, and it's played a role in taking away man's authority. This is why we fast food. Turn to Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the, that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate. And she gave to her husband with her and he ate with her. This, of course, is Adam and Eve, the fall of man. And they fall through their mouths by eating the wrong food. They're deceived by the enemy. The enemy comes. He tempts them in their heart and they fall by their mouth. They were unable to control what goes into their mouth and they get taken out. Yeah. The enemy uses food as the gateway to attack their heart, which then affects their mouth. And the enemy, he will always attack your heart because your heart affects your mouth and then your mouth affects your authority, yeah. whether or not you take it or you give it away. Okay. So if we can't control what goes into our mouth, we don't have a control over what comes out of it and we can give away our authority. Adam and Eve, they give away their authority. They eat the food and they get taken out. And the four boys here in Daniel, they do not want to do that. They want to exercise their authority. So they have a revelation of what God's placed in them. They have a revelation of their nature. They're called to be authority, mighty men to exercise dominion over the enemy. And they're not about to give it away by eating food that's going to make them submit to the wrong authority. And I can tell you that when you fast, you will become more aware of what you speak because you're negating food and you're feeding on the word. And that is what comes out of your mouth. I know for me, I've come into a fast and I've negated food and God's shown me the scriptures about my authority. You become more mindful of what you speak. And if you can gain control over your mouth, you will live in a greater level of authority. Yes. Okay. Really good. Satan comes against Adam and Eve. He loses Sorry, they lose their authority. But good news for us is that Jesus gained it back. Amen? Yeah. Jesus gained it back in the wilderness. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 3, Satan comes against him like he did against Eve with food. Yeah. It says, And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones to become bread. Satan comes against Adam and Eve, they get taken out. Satan comes against Jesus, he doesn't do so good, does he? Yeah. Jesus takes his authority. He gets tempted with food, he refuses, and out of it comes the word of God, yeah. and he reverses that which Adam and Eve lost in the garden, and he exercises his authority. This is an absolute flex from Jesus. Yeah. What a power move. So he's not going to get deceived by the enemy, he knows that his authority comes from his mouth. Even Adam lost it. Jesus takes it back. He refuses to eat the bread and he exercises the authority. And he says in return that man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word from the mouth of God. Food is not what governs your authority. Sorry, if you eat it, you won't gain authority. You gain authority by eating the words of God. Amen. That is how you exercise your dominion. This is the position now that we fast out of. Jesus has given us the authority. You have the authority. You just need to exercise it. Amen. The act of fasting is a way to exercise and activate your authority. It's not a work that you do. You, you, are, you are exercising your authority. Amen. So this is why we fast food. So this month, I encourage you to be purposeful when you're fasting. Fast food, control what goes into your mouth, and out of it, speak the word of God over areas where the enemies try to take your authority. Yeah. It's over your body, in your family's relationships. Speak the word of God. Jesus has given you the ability to fast and the authority and the benefits of it through the cross. Amen. Amen. Okay. Say, I have the authority of God. Well done. That's good. So I, you will start to see a shift. You will activate God's authority. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So go down back to Daniel, sorry, chapter 1, verse 12. 
And we will look at a benefit number two, or benefit number two. Fasting draws out the nature of God. Fasting draws out God's nature within you. Fasting will order your inner world this month. Daniel, 1, uh, Daniel chapter 1, verse 12. Please test your servants for 10 days and let us be given some vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be observed in your presence and the appearance of the youths who are eating the king's choice food and deal with your servants according to what you see. So in this scripture, the four boys have decided not to fast and they've asked that they be given vegetables and water for 10 days. And they do this because they want to order their inner world and draw out God's nature. So eating the meat from the king's table is going to defile them. There is something wrong with the meat from the king's table. Before the youths would eat it, before it was given to them, the meat would be offered to the idols of Babylon. It is spiritually defiled food. It gets offered to the enemy and then they consume it and they reflect the nature of the enemy. Daniel and the boys, they want to draw out God's nature. So they refuse and they eat vegetables and drink water for 10 days because they don't want to consume that which is going to defile their identity. This is a picture. Babylon is a picture of a culture that is damaging to our kingdom nature. And a key this year, if you want to live in increase and overflow, is to function in God's nature, in the identity, who he's made you to be on this earth. And this year, part of that is that we we need to stop consuming that which is going to defile and ruin our identity. So here, food is a picture of embracing the wrong beliefs, the wrong mindset. Our inner worlds can be out of whack when we take on too much. There is so much around us today that wants to deceive us, wants to confuse distort, get us, to, get us to believe lies about ourselves. We see all this everywhere. And what we feed on the most is generally things on social media, bad relationships, media, te- television. Our inner worlds can be fed on a diet that is not reflective of who we are, God's nature. And if you want to function fully, we can't eat deceptive food, amen. We need to be eating the thoughts of God. So the boys fast, they feed only on the thoughts of God and they're not corrupted by the wrong identity. Fasting is a tool that will help you to live out of a place of wholeness. This is why we abstain from food for a period and we feed only on God. I know that when I fasted, I used to, because I had a colourful past, I used to think that um, God wouldn't use me, that I couldn't hear from God, that I couldn't minister to God's people, and I I became acutely aware when I'd fasted of what I was feeding on, the wrong thoughts that that would cause me to live out of of alignment with identity, out of God's nature. And God God just told me in such a clear way my identity, God's nature within me, who I was supposed to be, and it activated something in me. All the junk and the lies from the world that we can take on, they can defile our identity. And when you are fasting and spending time with God, you are saying no to that and you are plugging in directly to him in his nature within you. It will magnify your kingdom nature and cause you to grow in your identity. It's very, this is a very important point for living in increase this year is to feed on the thoughts of God and discover his nature within you. Nebuchadnezzar, he wants to defile their identity. So he orders them to eat, and he changes their names. These four boys, each of their names, they all reflect the nature of God that's within them. Their Hebrew names all reflect the nature of God. And so Nebuchadnezzar, he changes the name to reflect Babylonian gods. Mishael, his name in Hebrew means one who is like God. One who is like God. His name gets changed to Meshach, and that means who is as the enemy is. He's trying to label him with the nature of the enemy, a a false identity. So we have so much around us that tries to to label us, whereas we reflect the nature of God. Our identity reflects his nature. Colossians 2.9 says it, For in Jesus 
All the fullness of the deity dwells in bodily form. And in him, you have been made complete. Amen. Amen. Jesus had the fullness of God's nature in him. You're in Jesus. So you have, you have God's nature within you. Amen. The fast is a way to actively pursue God's nature. Yeah. When we do it, we stop feeding on food. We stop feeding on all the junk around us. And we plug in to the thoughts of God. See, the act of fasting, it's, it's disconnecting from what is wrong, the world, and it's connecting to what is right. It's like charging your battery and you will become 100% full of God's nature within you, amen. So with the fast, we unplug from what is wrong and we plug in to what is right and all the wrong thoughts, all the junk about us, it dissipates until we are totally aware of God's nature and we are ready and able to function in the overflow and the increase, amen. Depression, anxiety, the wrong thoughts, fear will fall off you when you unplug from what is wrong. Fast and meditate on his thoughts, his nature within you, and you plug in to what is right. Amen. Amen. So with the fast this month, like the four boys, we disconnect. We stop feeding on what is wrong, and we plug in to what is right. Say with me, I have God's nature. I, have God's nature. I am plugging into God this month. I am plugging into God this month. Amen. Set with gusto. <laughs> Amen. So we refuse to eat the wrong food and we plug into God and he speaks to us about our identity. Right. Turn with me to Daniel, same chapter, verse 15. Hmm. And at the end of 10 days, their appearance seemed better and they were fatter than all the youths who had been eating the king's choice food. Interesting. Fasting releases the power of God. Fasting will release God's power in you and cause you to be victorious in your outer worlds, in your environment, in your workplaces. Fasting releases the power of God. The four boys here, they fast because they're facing spiritual opposition. They have a battle that's trying to stop them out of living out of God's power. They don't want it, Nebuchadnezzar doesn't want it activated in their life. So he's trying to shut it down and block it. Fasting here for them is a weapon of spiritual warfare. It's the same with us. Fasting is a weapon of spiritual warfare that we can use to exercise God's power and live in victory. So this is the reason why in verse 7, and they look better than anyone else because they've exercised The fast and God's power has welled up within them and it's noticeable. Fasting will cause you to reflect what's what's inside sorry, and it will release God's power in your life. Daniel and the boys, we see what happens in their life. They fasted and they were raised up to positions of great authority and power in their environment. They were the head and not the tail. This is what God has for you this year, amen. He wants you to be the head and not the tail of your workplace Wherever you find yourself in ministry, he wants you to function fully in God's power. He's an assignment for your life, and he wants you to be a power weapon on this earth for him. Amen? Amen. 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 And in order to overcome opposition and live in victory, we have to function fully in the power of God. We all need an extra dose of God's power this year. This is what fasting is. This is the difference between a fast and a diet. A fasting is a, is a physical faith act. Yeah. See, a diet, so you can fast and not have any spiritual benefit out of it if you don't press in. Yeah. See, that's the difference between a diet and a fast. A diet is just going without food for a period or abstaining from certain foods, leaving the cabri on the shelf so you can lose weight and get physically fitter. But the purpose of, of a fast, a biblical fast, is to activate... God's power in your life. It is a physical faith act. We see this in Scripture. Men and women who performed the fast as a physical faith act and it activated God's power in your life because a physical faith act will activate a spiritual release and it will bring God's power to your situation and will lead you to victory. Amen. It's not a work but it is a faith act that we do that activates God's power in our lives. 
We see this in scripture. Moses, when he parted the Red Sea, he raises his hands, he puts out his staff, and God moves. That is a physical faith act that releases God's power, and he's delivered into victory. Joshua, around Jericho, marched around the wall seven times. That is a physical faith act that creates a spiritual release. Yeah. We see here in Daniel, they're calling, these men, their calling is being threatened. They're facing extreme opposition. It's trying to shut down the power of God in their lives. And so they fast, they perform their physical faith act, and something happens in the spirit realm, and they are elevated into a position of power and authority. Fasting is your physical faith act, amen, that will activate his power in your life. It's like, it's, I equate it to, to praise and worship. So today we had a great, great praise session. And that, that is a physical faith act. So when we come into church, it's not enough that we just feel like we want to praise. No, we have to do something about it. We put up our hands, we sing. If you're up the front like me, you do join the mosh pit, do a little pogo. But you do, you do, it's an expression. It's a physical act of our faith, amen. And we see when we do that, that there's a spiritual release that happens and something is activated and God's power is released. We see people get prophetic words. They have encounters. They get healings. They're set free. Fasting is like praise and worship. It is a physical faith act that is going to activate God's power in your life. Jesus... He fasted, he performed a physical faith act and his power was activated. Jesus didn't perform a miracle till after he'd spent 40 days in the wilderness fasting. He comes back, he's full of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the mountain of transfiguration, he comes down after spending time with, with God and seeing Elijah and Moses. He comes down and he delivers the boy that was demonized that no one else could. And he says, this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. That is because he's taken the time to do a physical faith act and it's created a greater level of God's power in his life. Fasting is your physical faith act, amen. Verse 17 says that to these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. Wow. Daniel... And the boys, they spent time cultivating God's power. They did a physical act of faith. God's power is released. And they are functioning in authority in their environment. Daniel is functioning fully in his giftings. They've been given supernatural knowledge. They've been made the head and not the tail, where the enemy would seek to make them the tail. God uses their physical faith act, releases his power, and they get installed to their rightful place. They win the battle, amen. And this is for you today. If you've faced a battle, there's been opposition, you need to fast and press in to activate your faith. And through that, like when we praise and we worship God, there is a spiritual release done with your faith and God's power will come in a mighty way, amen. Yeah, so we do a physical faith act. And we're intentional about it. We're intentional about our faith act. Daniel and the boys, they were intentional. They fasted with focus and releasing God's power and it was released and they overcame. In 2 Kings 13, Elisha, there's a story about Elisha and the king who's facing the battle. He's facing opposition and Elisha tells the king who is facing the opposing army to take his arrows and to strike the ground intentionally and with confidence because that will determine the level of victory. And the fast, the fast is your faith arrow this month, amen. It is your faith arrow that is going to win the battle. So release it with intention. Release it with a focus on receiving more of God's power. It is a faith arrow that will win the victory for you, amen. Now, men, a key to experiencing increase this year is to be intentional about the fast. Say with me, I have God's power. power. Now, men, you're doing good. (laughs) So that's number three. We're intentional 
about releasing God's power. So I believe this year, this year as you press in, as you fast, that any battle, any weapon formed against you will not prosper, that you would see a mighty victory in every area of your life where you want it, in relationships, in your workplace, in finances. If there is a battle, press into the fast and press into God and be intentional about activating his power. It is your physical faith act that will ensure the victory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Mark chapter 8. We're going to unpack the benefit of increase. Fasting leads to increase. I oh, mean, that sounds exciting. I want more of that. Increase and in blessing. A key to experiencing that this year can be found through the fast. Mark chapter 8, verse 1. In those days... There was again a large crowd and they had nothing to eat. Jesus called his disciples and said to them, I feel compassion for the people because they have remained with me now three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away fasting to their homes, they will faint on the way and some of them have come from a great distance. In this passage, Jesus is with the crowd of 4,000 people. He's been ministering to them, teaching them for three days, and a dramatic increase is about to break out. And it says here that the crowd remained with him for three days. They have remained with Jesus. They have waited with him. And out of that, increase is about to be activated. This is this picture of the secret place where we take the time to remain with God and receive And a key to living in God's promises this year in activating increase is to remain with him in the secret place because it is out of intimacy where he can overflow in your life. Out of this comes increase and multiplication. The crowd, they remain with him for three days in the secret place and they set themselves up for an increase, an overflow. So we're called by Jesus in Matthew 6 to fast and to enter the secret place. He says, but you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that your fasting will not be noticed by men, but by your father who is in secret and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. It's the secret place. This is why Jesus asked us to fast in secret because it's out of intimacy where blessing and increase is able to take off in your life, where the father's able to multiply you. See, if we don't fast and spend time in the secret place remaining with God, you won't receive the benefit of increase because it's out of intimacy where God increases you. And again, I say this, that fasting is not a work that we do. It's about our faith, amen. But fasting is your vehicle of faith. Fasting will help you focus in the secret place. It will make you more sensitive to his presence, to Holy Spirit. And out of that, you will receive blessing and increase because you're spending more time communing with God in the secret place. Time in the secret place always brings a reward. Even if it doesn't feel like it when we're in it, it can be challenging. In that time, there is something that comes out of that spiritually that leads us to grow and increase. God will always increase you in the secret place. The 4,000, they remained in the secret place with God. And at the end, they received a dramatic increase. Let's see how the reward comes in verse 6. Verse 6 says, And he directed the people to sit down on the ground. And taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks and broke them and started giving them to his disciples to serve to them. And they served them to the people. They also had a few small fish. And after he had blessed them, he ordered these to be served as well. And they ate and were satisfied. And they picked up seven large baskets full of what was left over of the broken pieces. Seven large baskets. That's a couple of baker's delights. It's a lot of bread. This is one of two occasions where Jesus multiplied food. And this particular miracle here was brought about as a result of fasting and feeding on the word. It's a picture of what happens in the life of the believer and what happens in you when you fast and you feed 
on God's word. The crowd, they negate food for a period and they feed only on the words of Jesus. They are hungry for God, for his word, through Jesus, his teaching, they feed on him and blessing and increase breaks out in an incredible way. There is something about a person who is so hungry for God, hungry for his word, that they will negate food for a period and feed only on him that creates a spark in the supernatural realm that leads to increase and blessing. And God has a huge increase for you this year. Amen. He wants 2020 to be 10 times better than 2019, I mean. He wants you to have 10 times more of the blessings, of the finances, of the favour, of impact in ministry, of intimacy with him. He has a seven baskets full. He has a basket for every believer. It is in God's nature to multiply his people. 2 Corinthians 9 says that, you, by God's grace, sorry, you would abound in all things for all needs at all times. That means God has abundance for us. And a way to access that is when we spend time only feeding on the word, hungering for God. The 4,000, they feed on the word. They hunger for him. They eat nothing but the word and it leads to increase and blessing. Yeah. It's about a hungry heart, amen. Amen. It's about a hungry heart. Jesus multiplied the bread for the 4,000 because they had a hungry heart. And fasting, fasting is an expression of our heart for God. See, everybody, everybody hungers for God. Everyone. Some people may not be fully aware of it, that they have appetites that are, that are for other things, things of the flesh, relationships. But everyone has an innate desire for God. Some people just don't direct it in the right way. But we have Jesus, I mean. We have the knowledge of God. So we hunger for him. The 4,000 here, they had a hungry heart for God and God was able to bring overflow, increase and blessing. Fasting is an expression of your heart for God. Verse 2 here says that Jesus, he felt compassion for the people. The Greek word for compassion, it means to be moved in the inward parts. Yeah. See, their hunger, it spoke to God's heart and the overflow came. See, God has a hungry heart for you, amen. He longs to know you. He has a hungry heart for you. And when we reflect the nature of God's heart back to him, our hearts are aligned and bam, increase and blessing comes. Fasting positions our heart to hunger for God even more. It's about positioning our heart to be hungry for God. And through that, we're aligned. Our heart is aligned with his and increase in blessing breaks out. Because it's, it's our hunger for God mixed with God's unconditional love for us, unconditional favour. It's a blending of the two. And when we have our hunger for God, we separate time to fast. We say, God, I'm so hungry for your word. I'm going to spend this time fasting with you. I believe you've got more for me. You've got blessing and increase that my life's like the 4,000 that you're going to bring me a basket that overflows in every area of my life. That's when the, that's when the blessing is activated. It's about the position of the heart. These people have hungry hearts and their blessing and increase is activated. And this, this year, as we've heard today, is about increasing our hunger, increasing our desire for what God wants to do, increasing our capacity to receive more, to receive a greater level of abundance. God wants to increase us in every way. He wants to increase our, our ministries, increase the, the level of intimacy, the knowledge of, of the love that he has for us. He wants to increase. You can activate that through the fast, amen. It's yeah. so like the 4,000, we feed on God's word. We hunger for him. We spend time in the secret place during the fast. Yeah. And out of that, God will bring an increase. He will bring blessing and abundance to your life, amen. 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 Throughout the next 20 days, you have the opportunity to hunger for God like you've never hungered for him before. 
This is an invitation to increase. This is an invitation to hunger for God. We lay everything aside and we pursue him in the secret place. And I guarantee you that when you do that, that you will experience more blessing, a greater level of increase, a greater level of God's, God's favor and anointing on your life when you hunger for him and you separate time through the fast. Yeah. Say, I'm hungry for God. I'm hungry for God. Good. And let me tell you what else is going to happen when you fast. You are going to get hungry for food. You are going to hunger when you do it, I don't know if you've done it already, but when you, when you start tomorrow or whenever it is, you are going to be hungry for food. And when that happens, you'll hear the voice inside your head say that there's nothing happening here. It's, it's pointless. It's useless. Go and eat something. The pet food ads will look good. <laughs> you will have, your, your flesh will reject it. The enemy will try and stop you from pursuing the fast, from pursuing God. And let me tell you that when that happens, that is when you press in, amen. You press in because that is when you are going to get your increase. You are going to get your breakthrough this year, amen. Amen. So be expectant and full of faith today, amen, that when this fast comes, that it is a way of activating God's faith in your life. It is going to be the vehicle of faith that God's going to use to increase you. You're going to get a greater level of authority, you're going to exercise dominion. You're going, to, you're going to have a greater awareness of your identity. Wholeness is going to come. Amen? Yeah. Wholeness is going to come. You're going to operate in the power of God. You're going to be the head and not the tail in your workplaces, in your, fi- in your finances, in ministry. Fear is going to go. And then when you press in, blessing and increase and abundance is going to be activated. There's going to be seven baskets that overflow because you've spent time fasting and pressing in in the secret place. Amen. So be expectant today and get excited. Give God a big hand. It's going to be an amazing time in the life of our church. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Let me pray for you as I close. I thank you, Jesus. Mm, Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you've got so much you want to do in our lives this year. You've got so much you want to do through us as individuals and as a church. I thank you, God, that this is the year where we will break through. Thank you, God, that this is the year of propulsion. I thank you, Jesus, that as we come to you this month, as we pursue you in the secret place through our fast and our prayer, that your power would be magnified in our lives. I activate the power of God in people's lives. I thank you, God, that you would would raise us up to an even greater level of victory, of exercising dominion. I thank you, Jesus, for a a fresh wind of your spirit that that washes away all the junk that we've picked up. I thank you for alignment of identity. I thank you, God, that we have your nature. I thank you, God. I see people that are going to be set free. I declare that people will be set free of of addictions, of the wrong self-image, of the lies of the enemy, that the temple's being cleared out this month. I thank you for alignment of identity and we will walk tall in confidence and boldness knowing who we are in you, God. I thank you for that. And I release, I release a greater level of increase and abundance this year. I thank you, God, that we pursue you in the secret place. We long to have a greater level of intimacy with you, Father God. I thank you for that, God. I thank you for the upgrade of the secret place. I thank you for new dreams and visions for this year. And I rebuke any confusion about this year, any voice that says it's just going to be the same, that I'm going to miss out. You are not going to miss out on what God is wanting to do in this hour. Amen. I thank you that we are accelerating and I declare favour and increase in Jesus' name.